hey welcome to the painting portion of the tunnel book uh, the tunnel book I did for joggles I will put the link in the description below and you can just click on that and that will take you right to the written step-by-step -step instructions for that and I really had a really good time with this so I did want to give you a little closer look at the painting part of it um, if you're not familiar I used, uh, first of all, let me just give you a look at this thing. This is some wet paint here. And this is just a, a paper palette that I like to use. And you can get these at any art supply store. I'll link them below. And it's a slick surface. It holds up better than freezer paper, which is why I spend the money on this. I've used several different colors of green on this project and green gold phthalo green which is a yellow shade and I've also just for the heck of it because you can I've used this uh, dilutions paint use whatever greens you like and the idea is to sort of mix these greens together to get a all over variable in the greens and you can also mix and this is one paint that I recommend highly even if you have no good uh, acrylic paints. The Quinn Nickel Azo Gold is really, really excellent. It seems to mix with every single color and just gives it a nice soft edge. This color is available in high flow, um, this kind of flow, <laughs> whatever flow this is, and then the regular two paints. And it doesn't matter what kind of a paint you have. These, these are all pigmented in the same way. So that's a high, highly recommend. I did use carbon black, and you'll see in the video that I use a touch, and I never use it straight up. I always mix it with a blue or a green or it makes a really nice color with this just for those little muddy greens and really dark areas that you want to get now I did not use this blue I don't think I'm not sure why that's out I usually use Payne's gray which is a black gray color but that was not I mean it's a blue gray, blue black but that wasn't working with the colors today I did go in with Hansa Yellow Light. You could use the Dilutions Yellow. Perfectly great paint. I just started experimenting with these and I like them a lot. I used some Titanium White with the yellow for those a few highlights. I used um, so, uh, the paintbrushes I used. Uh, this was about a, uh, maybe a three quarter inch flat. This is uh, yeah, three quarter inch from the Artist Loft. I'm not losing any bristles off of these brushes, which makes me happy. This is a six millimeter flat brush. This is a number four fan brush and we see how to use this. It's a really fun brush to pl play around with. And then I don't know why this is out. Maybe it's because it's one of my favorite brushes. <laughs> it's a cheap brush. I've had it for years. And I tell you the truth, uh, for my watercolor brushes, I like to have really good brushes, and I have been building them up slowly over the years because they're expensive. But with acrylics, I don't generally use really great brushes because the fact of the matter is, as long as it's not leaving hairs, I would just as soon be able to get scrubby with my brushes. I do have a couple good ones. Okay, so this is the green gold, which is very like the um, fresh lime. It's a little darker. It's a little earthier. It doesn't matter that much. And a phthalo green that I do like to use. It's not a color I use by itself, but it is a color that I use as a mixing color. The other thing that I really want to tell you, because even if you spent five dollars on a brush like this or probably three dollars um, I still take good care of my brushes and I like to use the master's brush cleaner I love this stuff I've used it since I was oil painting back in the whenever 70s 
don't tell anybody. And it's a great stuff. Now, I have heard that you can use, um, what's it called? I'll think of it. Oil soap, Murphy's oil soap, sorry. So you just wet your brush, you swirl it around and soap it up, swirl it in your hand, and you're going to make sure you get into this area and rinse your brush well. I know that a lot of people don't bother with their cleaning and they're not so meticulous, but you know what? I am. I take good care of my tools and they last me for a long time. And that's that's what I do. And I recommend that you do that too. When I've taught, even in kids' classes, I really encourage them to clean up after themselves well because it's an important skill to learn that Anyway, so let's get to the painting. I hope that you see some new techniques. You don't have to be a great painter to get this job done. It's fun. Just play around with the colors and the paints. One thing I did forget to mention and I did want to address is this acrylic glazing liquid. I get it in the satin. I believe that there's a lot of brands on the market of this. And what it does is it dilutes it doesn't dilute your paints. It adds a transparency to your paints and it increases what is called the open time of your paint so that the paint doesn't dry as quickly. I like to work in transparent layers. Uh, that's my style of painting and so I do use this. You can use water. Um, if you do a lot of acrylic painting though, it, I would suggest trying out this stuff and seeing how you like it. 